Forgotten, yet far superior. Steam. That's right, steam. I want to tell you something. People, uh, well, they wanted to phase out steam, okay? Because people were figuring out how to use it. And steam is far superior to gasoline. And they wanted to phase it out. So they began blowing up boilers in apartment building basements on purpose. Even putting stories in, whoa, the maintenance man was killed and blah, blah. They're dangerous. They got to go. They were not dangerous. They had safety valves and pressure release valves. And thing is, you can achieve over unity with steam. Okay. And they know the more you play with it, the more you'll figure stuff out. So they wanted to get rid of steam altogether. And they pretty much have. So let's take a look at a blast from the past. Kevin Charles Perkins here. Many people have heard of the Stanley Steamer, a steam-powered car in the early 1900s. But few people had ever heard of the Doble steam car until Jay Leno began showing off his car collection. Yes, the shiny distraction business pays quite well. But sometimes it backfires, like when they tend to show off. Now many more of you have heard of the Doble steam car and probably looked it up. Still, there are many who have never heard of the Doble or the Stanley steamer. Well, the Doble was quite a marvel. Only the wealthy could afford one. Each car hand built from start to finish by a small group of people rather than mass produced. But had they been assembled on assembly lines like the Ford, they would have been much cheaper. And this was a frightening thought for some, so they were forced out of business. Why were they forced out of business? Well, the Doble was like no other steam car. Ahead of its time, sleek, quiet, fast, a light version of the E model could go from zero to 75 miles per hour in just 10 seconds. And we're talking about the 1920s and 30s here, ladies and gentlemen. But unlike other steam engines of the day, you didn't have to heat the entire boiler full of water. Instead, it used a flash steam process, wherein a much smaller area was heated up, and then only the amount of water needed was injected into the hot box, where it exploded in the steam right away, pushing the pistons. This reduced warm-up time to just 30 seconds, about the time it takes you to put your seatbelts on and play with your radio stations. That's it, and you were ready to go. You sat in it cold, turned the key, and in 30 seconds, you were ready to drive. This, back in the 1920s and 30s. Imagine all the improvements that could have been made to it over the last 80 years. Not that it needed many. And this flash steam process also eliminated any danger of boiler explosions. Not that there were many. Like I said, most seemed to be sabotage. However, if there was a terrible car wreck, it eliminated the possibility of hot water splashing on victims. The car was very safe and quiet like a whispering ghost. It also turned the steam exhaust back into water to be used again. And thus, the car could travel 1,500 miles on 24 gallons of water. But it used kerosene to heat the flash steam chamber and only got about 15 miles to the gallon of kerosene. However, some people realized it wouldn't be long before the general public figured out how to heat that flash steam chamber by other means. After all, the car was quite powerful. Look at a steam-powered locomotive. So the scaled-down version in a car was plenty powerful enough to turn its own alternator while en route. 
and if it could spin its own alternator while en route, well then, the electricity produced by the alternator would have been more than enough to heat its own little flash steam chamber box electrically. Again, while en route, this vehicle was so ahead of its time, perhaps even by today's standards, and yet this was the 1920s and 30s, over 80 years ago. And again, imagine all the advancements it could have made over the last 80 years, one of which being this. Having the ability to generate the electricity needed while in motion to heat its own flash steam chamber box with that electricity. In other words, they no longer needed kerosene at all. And the power used to heat up the little flash steam chamber was generated by the car itself rolling down the highway. In other words, just add water. That was it. No more kerosene. No more cost. And that also means that its only emissions would be steam. 100% pollution free, ladies and gentlemen. For the cost of water, and remember it recycled the steam exhaust back into water so it could go 1500 miles on 24 gallons of water. So, if you had a motorhome like this and you had a, say a 60 gallon tank, just water, you could go cross country 3,000 miles from west coast to east coast and sleep in the thing if it was a little motorhome for absolutely free. Well not only that, but guess what else you could do? You could power your whole house for absolutely free. No electric bill, no heating bill, no cooking bill, and no gasoline bill driving around. Just have one of these steam engines in the garage running quietly, whispering ghost quiet, on water, heating your home, running your refrigerator, and everything else. Now do you understand why this automobile was driven into the abyss? And with today's technology, we could reduce the warm-up time to just four seconds. Meet the induction heater, a coil, which heats up any conductive material within the coil. When electricity is passed through the coil, yet the coil itself remains cool to the touch. Now from what I've seen it does this quite fast and the amount of electricity needed to operate it is not much. Your modern cars today have alternators that pump enough juice to run 1500 watt car stereos, okay? But I've seen these induction coils running on less than half of that. Furthermore, you don't have to supply full power to this coil full time. It could be pulsed as long as the flash steam chamber is hot enough to flash steam out of water on for three seconds, off for three seconds. And if that's the case, you're not really using 700 watts full time because it's off half the time, which means you're doing this for 350 watts. Do you realize all those diesel trucks on the road, all the freight, everything, could be running pollution free? No global warming. No carbon tax. And if you don't believe this technology exists, just look up induction heater. I'm Kevin Charles Perkins. I hope you've enjoyed this show. There's more coming, so be sure to subscribe and like and share.